Now, two assessments from Iraqi Americans of the growing political turmoil in Iraq. Faisal Istrabadi was Iraq's deputy ambassador to the United Nations and is now a visiting law professor at Indiana University. Abbas Kadim is an assistant professor at the Naval Postgraduate School. He has written extensively about Iraqi Shia Muslims. We thank you both for being with us. And I'll start with you, Faisal Istrabadi. What is going on right now between the prime minister and the vice president? Well, I think what uh, Iraqis are in store for is uh, a, uh, an attempt by uh, Maliki to uh, establish that he is the sort of unchallenged uh, ruler of Iraq. At least I fear that that's what's going on. Last week, remember that the Vice President Hashemi belongs to the Iraqi political coalition headed by the former Prime Minister Alawi. Uh, last week, you started having tanks show up on the streets of Baghdad in front of uh, the houses of people like Alawi, who are outspoken critics of uh, the prime minister. And then in the last uh, 24 or 36 hours, you have seen this uh, uh, developing story of uh, uh, a, a warrant to arrest the sitting vice president of Iraq on terrorism charges. Uh, it is, I think, a, uh, a very dangerous game that the prime minister is playing. Uh, and it can indeed uh, result in ripping apart the country along confessional grounds yet again after 2006 and 2007 uh, when we fought what was a de facto civil war. Abbas Kadim, is it a, a potentially dangerous game with uh, the Prime Minister al-Maliki trying to <coughs> consolidate his position? There is always a dangerous game in Iraq in the past years. I normally don't make a policy for myself to disagree with my friend Faisal Starabadi, but uh, I might look at it from a probably slightly different way. I think that Maliki is not much trying to be the unchallenged ruler of Iraq, but more trying to become a stronger prime minister or a strong prime minister in Iraq, which what Iraq needs right now, because the most challenging months probably for Iraq are the months following the official withdrawal of the United States. And uh, Maliki's uh, responsibilities are huge. I think that, of course, does not justify any uh, extrajudicial uh, actions or something that is not constitutional, uh, but uh, more than it's uh, his nephew, who used to be back. the minister of uh, culture, was uh, in, uh, accused of terrorism, and in fact, he's a, a fugitive right now. Uh, there is there is more to it uh, than than just making a a charge uh, against a person as important as Tariq al Hashemi, uh, but I I think we have to wait and see what uh, ed evidence will be uh, presented. I have a lot of faith in the Iraqi judiciary, and I think they will sort it out very well. I'm sorry about that. We the video slipped away there just a moment, but it came back. To, back to you, uh, Faisal Istrabadi. Could it be? What Mr. Kadim is saying, just a temporary move on the part of Prime Minister Maliki to, to uh, be stronger uh, now well, that the American troops have left? Well, uh, I, let, let me start with the proposition that what Iraq needs is a strong leader. Uh, uh, with all respect uh, to, to my very good friend, uh, I think that uh, what we need are rulers uh, in Iraq who are dedicated to the principles of constitutional democracy. Their strength lies not in the elimination or in the harassment of, of political adversaries, uh, but on the contrary, in uh, encouraging uh, constitutional discourse. What has been happening in, in Iraq cannot, in the last 24 hours cannot be seen in isolation. For the past uh, 12 months, uh, Prime Minister Nouri al-Maliki has refused to uh, appoint a permanent minister of defense. That was supposed to be one of the portfolios that went to the Iraqiya coalition. They have nominated six people for that position. Each one of them has been rejected. He has appointed uh, a member of his own coalition, the prime minister's own coalition, as acting minister of defense. Uh, he, ha he is acting as minister of the interior, uh, and one of his cronies is acting uh, minister of state for national security. Uh, he has cashiered uh, career uh, officers and appointed cronies to senior uh, officer positions in the armed and security forces in Iraq. In other words, the prime minister has, under his control as we speak, 
all the instrumentalities of state security in Iraq. I'll remind uh, your viewers that in the early 1970s, this is precisely how Saddam Hussein uh, came to power uh, uh, at the time. What we, uh, I think, Iraqis, with our history, we have to be overly cautious when we see similar uh, actions occur as have occurred in our relatively recent past. Uh, strength in the new Iraq must be through constitutional democracy back, and not through harassment and intimidation. Back to Abbas Kadim, why shouldn't we see these actions by Prime Minister Maliki as something that is concerning, that does maybe harken back to the methods of Saddam Hussein? It is concerning, of course, but I do not believe that the comparison with Saddam Hussein is valid. Um, as Maliki's own uh, deputy, Saleh al-Mutlaq, the other day said that Maliki is the worst dictator in Iraq's history. And, and, and that's, I think, not an insult to Maliki more than it's an insult to anybody in Iraq with an IQ above zero. Uh, Maliki is, is not a dictator in the way Saddam Hussein is. The s situation in Iraq is not the situation in, in, uh, in Iraq in 1979 when Saddam Hussein began to purge others and then take control for himself and his family. Uh, the, the, the parallel is way far off. But I do agree with Faisal that, yes, there are measures that are uh, uh, causing concern, and they should cause concern. The Constitution in Iraq should be followed, but also it should be followed by everybody. I mean, this is the, the problem in, with the setting in Iraq. Uh, all of the political process that has been going on in Iraq is not constitutional, as Faisal knows. It is extra-constitutional. Iraq is run according to the Erbil Agreement, where they got together and then they divided the, the political pie away from the Constitution and away fr from the results of the election. Let me. So we are having a consensus among Iraqi politicians not to follow the consti Constitution. They admitted many times in official settings, including the first session in the, in the Iraqi parliament, that they yeah. broke the Constitution and they continue to do so. So yes, I think it is con causing concern, but I would what? not go as far as causing a, 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 a parallel, making a parallel or comparing it to Saddam Hussein. It is really outrageous. All right, we have less than a minute left. I'm sorry. So I just want to come back quickly to each of you to ask you how you see what what will influence events going forward very quickly Faisal Istrabadi well uh, the uh, let us remember even Saddam Hussein was not uh, in 1970 was not the Saddam Hussein of 1979 the United States has tremendous leverage uh, it should seriously consider whether it is wise uh, to go forward for instance with uh, arms sales to uh, Iraq under these circumstances when uh, sectarian violence threatens again and it should look very seriously at the economic incentives that it has uh, to bring the government to a more democratic and constitutional uh, means. Reconsider sending arms and other kinds of aid and, and just quickly uh, to Abbas Kadim, what can influence events, what can or could the U.S. do? Well, the United States uh, has a uh, not much influence. In fact, the last chance for having real influence was in uh, the end of June of 2004. After that, we have, and, and I said that many times in, in different settings, uh, what happens in Iraq right now is the uh, results of the influence in reg uh, of regional powers. I think the keys are uh, in Iran and in Saudi Arabia, pretty much, rather than the United States. And for us, we try to use diplomatic means if possible, to probably uh, create some mutual uh, understanding among Iraqis. But I don't think the United States has much power or influence in Iraq. In the same sense, the regional powers uh, do have uh, influence in Iraq over the different factions. We will leave it there. Gentlemen, thank you both. Thank you.